I want you to say, I'm just a mess up. Don't give it so many scientific names to it. Just say, I'm just a mess up. Messed up my body or messed up my mind? This happened a few years ago. They were said, where is the hospital? I said, see, these are all patients who come for this ailment. I'm getting the best out of them. And in 15, 20 days, they're doing fine. If you need a stronger dose, we can do that. But this will be good enough. Do a slip work. You can incubate a lot of either negative things or positive things in sleep. How many of you find uh, that one day morning when you get up without any reason, you're just feeling ugly for no reason? If it is happening even at least two, three times a year, if it is, then you must do certain things before you go to bed. It's very, very important because unconsciously, you need to understand this, you can incubate a lot of either negative things or positive things in sleep. Either pleasantness or unpleasantness, you can incubate very effectively uninterrupted in sleep. You can also incubate it in the day, but there are so many interruptions, it doesn't happen very efficiently. But if you have a tendency to go to bed in a certain way and you wake up in the morning really nasty for simply no reason, that means you're incubating things in the night very efficiently. Bad eggs. This is not just about psychological disturbances, it can cause major physiological problems over a period of time. It's, it's important that you eliminate these things from your life. So, before you go to bed in the night, there are certain things that you need to take care of. It's best if you're eating meat and other kinds of meals, you eat at least three to four hours before you go to bed. The digestion is over. Before going to bed, drink a certain amount of water and go to bed. You will see it gets taken care of just like this. One simple thing can be just a shower, always to shower before you go to bed, it'll make a lot of difference. In this weather, maybe cold showers are difficult, so you go for lukewarm showers, don't go for hot showers in the night, go for lukewarm showers, it makes you alert. So you will think, oh, I cannot sleep. It doesn't matter, you will sleep fifteen, twenty minutes or half an hour later, but you will sleep better because it will take away certain things. When you shower, it is not just the dirt on the skin that you're taking away. Have you noticed if you're very tense and anxious, whatever, just a shower, you came out and feels like almost the burden has been taken away from you? Have you not noticed this? So it's not just about washing the skin. A whole lot of things happen when water flows over your body. This shower is a very rudimentary bhuti shuddhi because over seventy percent of your body is actually water. If you run water over it, a certain purification happens, which is beyond cleaning the skin. One more thing if you want to do, you just light an organic oil lamp, a cotton wick, some oil, anything. What do you use here? Normal cooking oil, linseed oil, rice bran oil or sesame oil, what do you have? Olive oil, fine. Any organic oil with a cotton wick, just burn one little lamp somewhere in the room where you sleep. You will see these things will completely disappear. If you can bring in a chant or there are nightly practices, yogic practices, before you go to bed, sit on your bed and do this practice. Do you know, in about… if you live for about sixty years, you're… on an average, most human beings are eating anywhere between eleven hundred to fourteen hundred tons of food. So that means even what you think is my body is not this, it's changing every day. New input is happening and old things are going away. So fourteen hundred tons, you don't have to carry that much of weight right now. So obviously, what you have as a body right now is just a transient amount of food and soil, isn't it? Hello? So what you think is mine also is not it, it is just all the time changing. Tonight before you go to bed, spend at least twelve, fifteen minutes reminding yourself, you're neither this body nor this mind. Just lie down and just remind yourself, this body is not really you, it is mine right now for use.
but it's not really me. Just… if you're not able to do it, just link it to your breath. Inhalation, I am not the body. Exhalation, I am not even the mind. Just lie down for twelve minutes and do it. Till the last moment, till you fall asleep. This is something you must notice. You just jump into the Thames and swim upriver for two hours, you will sleep well tonight. Yes, for sure, I'm telling. Now, f for everything we have a name. These things are becoming like qualifications for people. I am an insom insomniac, I am an anorexic, I am this, I am that. I want you to say, I am just a mess up. Don't give it so many scientific names to it. Just see, I am just a mess up. Messed up my body or messed up my mind? One of these things. Yes or no? If you give it such high sounding names, it will become interesting to be one of these things. Don't do this to yourself. I have seen thousands and thousands of people who come with this kind of... These are not ailments. These are qualifications that you've taken on because the other qualifications that you have don't amount to much. I'm, I'm sorry I'm speaking like this, but I want you to know, these are all self-created things. You create a problem and you carry the problem on your head like a jewel. If you bring yourself to a certain balance, if you bring yourself to a certain ease with life, when body needs rest, it will sleep. What is there a big deal about? You must sleep, you must sleep. There's no such thing. If you… if you put in enough activity, it will eat, isn't it? Yes, sir. Now, eating is a problem, sleeping is a problem. See, this has all become a big business, please understand. You must have problems to support the economy of the nation. That's one thing you're doing. The pharmaceutical industry, the medical industry, sickness industry is going on big time because everybody is carrying these things like they are some kind of crowns that they're wearing. You bring your system to a certain level of ease with involvement, nothing else, there's no treatment for this. This happened a few years ago. Now uh, we've refined the name and now it's called Isha Rejuvenation Center. Okay. There was a time when we called it the yogic hospital. When it was a yogic hospital, when I was directly involved in it, a few doctors from the United States came, they wanted to see the yogic hospital because they had seen the case histories, how people have recovered and everything. They came. After the third day in the ashram, the people informed me at the ashram, Sadhguru, these doctors are very angry, they want to leave. I said, what happened? They are asking, where is the yogic hospital? Oh, then I got the point, okay. Then I met this group, said they were said, like this. That where is the hospital? So you I said your idea of a hospital is beds, people lying down on it, ten people attending to them. That's not my idea for hospital. I'll take you around and I took them into the garden and into the fields and said, see, these are all patients who come for this ailment, that ailment, that ailment. I'm getting the best out of them. And you will see in 10-15 days, they will be doing fine. <laughs> we have given them practices, they wake up at 4.30 in the morning, do three hours of sadhana, then do two hours of work, then eat one meal, then work, then eat. By the evening, they want to eat whatever is given to them. <laughs> and night, they fall dead and wake up in the morning. And in 15-20 days, they're doing fine because there are some ailments which are infectious in nature, they come from outside. These are invasions from other organisms, we have to deal with it medically. Medicine is needed because something else has invaded our system. But over seventy percent of the ailments on the planet are self-created. Why would your body create ailment for you? You're doing something wrong, isn't it? You're not able to sleep. What do you think is wrong? I want you to figure it, all of you. If you're not able to sleep, what do you think is wrong? One thing is maybe l lack of physical activity, most probably that's a thing. Another thing is 
your mind is in a mental diarrhea. Once it is going like this, what goes on? We have no control. Fear will happen, anxiety will happen, disturbances will happen. And your involvement with the world is gossipy. You're not involved as life. You're involved as a social person. Understand? Your society is only a consequence. It is not the basis of your life. Yes or no? The existence is the basis. Society is just a consequence. We could have lived in the jungle. It would be too difficult to organize everything for each individual, so we decided we will live in London. That's all. It's only a consequence of a certain pursuit. It is not the basis of your existence. Right now, society has become the basis of your existence. So you cannot sleep. Because everybody is running through your mind. You just have to get this back to its natural orientation. Shambhavi Mahamudra is a simple process in that direction. If you need a stronger dose, we can do that. But this will be good enough, you will sleep well. But today you must walk home, however far it is. Okay? Just pull up your boots and just walk. Oh, but it'll be 2 a.m. when I reach. It's all right, but you'll sleep. Time you do something. You don't do the fundamentals right and you're trying to fix the surface, it's not going to work. Just join the local football team. You will sleep well. People who are working physically, manually on the street, you just see, they'll sit on a truck and sleep off. It doesn't matter how cold it is, how rough it is. Have you seen them? Because they put in enough activity. And you are not a social being as society is trying to sell it to you. You are a human being. Society is a consequence. We can live in society or we can live out of society. You can live with it or without it. It is only a convenience. It is not the source of your existence. Right now, society, you're treating psychologically as if it's the source of your existence. What somebody says about you, what somebody thinks about you, you're concerned about all this. What is somebody thinking about me? What is... Nobody's thinking about you, they're busy with their own rough stuff. You think everybody's thinking about you through the day? Believe me, they're not, they got their own stuff going. <laughs> when you close your doors, if you can leave London out and only you go to bed, you will sleep. You want to sleep with London, it doesn't work. I'm going at this this way because people are constantly inventing problems for themselves. Anything that happened to you as an ailment without an external influence is your making. Yes or no? Is it okay? It's your making, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's your making, uh, we have to look, why are you making up these things? Simple tips you want, no tips. One tip is you must walk home today. You will sleep for sure. <laughs> Do Shambhavi every day, twice a day, you will sleep. As we conclude this exploration into the realm of sleep, insomnia and anxiety, I want you to remember that every challenge we face has a solution within us. The wisdom shared by Sadhguru is not just for this moment, it's a timeless guide that you can carry with you on your journey. Sleep is not merely a physical act, it's a profound aspect of our well-being. As you reflect on the insights provided today, consider incorporating these simple practices into your life. It's a step towards nurturing your own well-being. Remember, our channel is here as a source of guidance and inspiration for you. We delve into various aspects of life, offering valuable perspectives and tools for transformation. So, stay tuned for more enriching content. If you found this video helpful, 
do give it a thumbs up and share it with others who might benefit from these teachings your support helps us reach more people and spread the wisdom feel free to leave your thoughts and questions in the comments below we value your feedback and it often inspires our future content thank you for being part of our community and we look forward to seeing you again on our channel until then take care find your peace and live a life filled with well-being and joy namaskaram